Welcome to the final part of the Excel VBA real world example series. It's been a long series, but we're finally here at the last video. In this video, we'll look at how to finish off a project. There's a few critical things we have to remember to do to make sure our client Eric can get value from the file. Let's get into it. Now let's just quickly remind ourselves of this process. Click the button. Our process is going to run. We can see it chugging away there. Now that's good, but we need to think about communication with the client. And this is one place where we can communicate better with the client. We can tell the client that the macro has finished. How can we do that? How can we tell the client that the macro is finished? Well, we can put a message box in at the end of the routine down at the bottom here. We're going to put a message box in and firstly, just very simple, have a message box flash flash up at the end to say that the routine is completed. When I run our routine again and we can see we've got our message box there, but we can do better than that. We can be more informative here. So I've got a challenge for you. What about if we wanted to say to the client this many customers has been processed? Remember, we don't know how many customers Eric is going to be processing, so we want to say X number of customers has been processed. Stop the video. Think about how you might do that. Well, we have that information available to us in cell D4. So we've got to get that reference right in the VBA editor. And let's start by just typing this reference in alongside the message box syntax. And let's just see if we can get this value to a pair. And the range is D4. So that's our syntax for the time being. Control S, save the file. Hit the process button again. Then what happens at the end? We should have a number flashing up. And there it is. We've got a number flashing up here. So there's some dynamic quality to this code because there's, if there's more or less data in the file, this number sh should change. But the number itself is not particularly informative. So we actually want to concatenate or just connect together, link together uh, this uh, reference with a text string and let's say customers processed processed sed there we go and then let's run the code again so now now we're expecting to see 49 customers processed and there it is and then how could we further kind of perfect polish up this message box uh well in the top here at the top we've got microsoft excel now we love excel of course but we don't want to give free advertising to microsoft on our files so how do we get rid of this uh do you know how to do that well we can do that by just going comma zero comma this zero determines the type of message box we just want a simple message box here and then if we type something after the zero this is going to appear in that title area at the top of the message box. Control S, save the file. Hit the process button one more time and we can see our message box flashing up there with 49 customers processed. So this is doing two things. It's telling the customer the macro has run. It's often a problem with the in the real world, customers not knowing that macros have finished. Tells the customer the macro has finished. Tells the customer how much work the, ma the macro has done. In this case, 49 customers. So an example of good communication with the customer. What else do we need to think about when we're handing over the file? Well, one important thing to do is to make sure the customer understands the limitations of your implementation. So our imp implementation is not perfect. Through the series, we've been discussing dynamic quality. We've been able to achieve dynamic quality in some places. In other places, we've taken the decision to not go down that coding rabbit hole to put the dynamic quality in. So we have some limit limitations, but any implementation has some limitations. The important thing is that you're communicating those to the client. So I've written some down here. And how do you go about um, identifying these limitations? Well, very simple. Go through the code and then for each line of code, what are you assuming about the setup of the file? So. Uh, this uh, first line of code, we're making an assumption here about the number of sheets in the file because we're using this line of code active workbook dot sheets 
dot count. So we should write that write that down. Cannot add sheets, or at least some care is required when adding new sheets. So we could give instructions to the customer for how to add new sheets, for example. But the important thing is the customer is aware of that limitation. Can't change the order of the sheets. So we've got a line of code here for counter equals three. So we've hard coded the sheet ordering there. So we can't change the order of the sheets. Also, what else have we got here? We can't change the names of the sheets. Here we're using those hard-coded sheet names. Not necessarily anything wrong with that. I'm not saying that's the wrong approach, but we should inform the customer that they can't change the sheet names. Then there's various other things there. So you can't add new rows or columns because we've got plenty of hard-coded references here. Here's a hard-coded cell reference, for example. Uh, yep, we can't move the formulae around. Got some formulae at the top of the analysis sheet here. We can't move those around because we're referring to those particular cells uh, in the code. And then, yeah, we've got an assumption about the um, the maximum number of unique names in the file. Made a mis uh, spelling mistake there. 2,000. So where is that assumption? If we go back to our formulae at the top here, we can see they're only covering up to... Uh, row 2000 there. So that's another assumption that we need to make. Now you might be saying to me, Chris, well, this all sounds quite limiting and it is literally limiting, but in reality, I find that customers are quite amenable to these assumptions. They're quite prepared to accept some of these assumptions because they, they can see the power of what's happening. You know, if you're not using code every day, then when you see some code running and doing a lot of manual work for you, you know, it's really, really powerful and impactful thing. Therefore, people are prepared to sacrifice some of that flexibility and to accept some of these assumptions. Of course, we could go for maximum dynamism, maximum dynamic power. We could put all of the programming in we need to ensure maximum flexibility. So the customer could add sheets, the customer could add rows and columns, but it's a trade-off. How much of that coding do we actually want to do if the customer is happy with some of these assumptions? So where that balance is going to be is up to you to decide. It's to do with your personal style as well, but it's all about good communication with the customer. So when I'm handing this over to, over to the customer, handing this over to Eric, I'm going to make sure Eric is aware of the assumptions that I've made. What else would I would I do? I'd also do some kind of instructional video. And I found that my customers seem, seem to love this. Uh, I've got a setup here to do uh, video recordings easily. Uh, if you don't have, if you haven't used video recording software before, I use something called XSplit, but XSplit has lots of bells and whistles that maybe you don't need. So a simple screen recorder, something like I have the uh, ice cream screen recorder, ice cream screen recorder. That's a simple screen recorder that will allow you to record record the screen while you talk through the application, you know, a bit like this view here that you can see now. Um, talk through the application, that's going to give the client a really nice guidance video. And that, again, is going to help build confidence in your implementation. So these are the things we should think about. It's not just about the coding. I've seen this so many times. You know, if we're not thinking about the interpersonal side and the social side, client management, that can have a real limiting effect on our coding. People won't be able to feel the impact of our coding skills if we don't wrap them up properly in these softer skills. So this is an important message to take at the end of the series. Congratulations for making it to the end of the Real World VBA series. I've loved putting it together. This channel really is for you. Let me know if you made it to the end of the series. Let me know what else you'd like to see on the channel. I'll see you soon.